In a previous video, we made a generator and we connected it to a voltage regulator, we smoothed the voltage and charged a battery through a BMS with it and then put it on some load. And in order to do that, we used this. It's a pre-bought voltage regulation board. It's quite good. You can take a high voltage in and put the desired voltage out and you can change that by twiddling that little knob there. But at the time, I said, well, just buy this because these things are amazingly cheap. But it is a black box, and I hate black boxes, so I always want to know how a black box works. So, big question, how does a voltage regulator work, and how do you go about building one? Now, voltage regulators were initially electromechanical devices. They were, in fact, just relays. Not too dissimilar to this, which is a household relay for electrical supply. Now, you very rarely get them in one relay configuration. Mostly, you can still buy them for things like vintage cars and tractors, that sort of thing, in a two-way relay configuration with a voltage regulation relay and a cutoff relay. But you'd also get them in a three-relay re configuration where you have current overload protection, voltage protection, and circuit cutoff. Now, if we have a look at the circuit diagram of the cutoff relay first, what you can see there is an iron core with a coil around it, and it connects a generator to the battery circuit uh, when the generator builds up to the desired value. It also disconnects the generator when it slows down or stops. That iron core is magnetised to pull down on a hinged armature that you can see against a spring. When the armature is pulled down, a set of contact points closes and the circuit's complete. When the magnetic field is broken, like, like when the generator slows down or stops, a spring pulls that armature back up, breaking the contact points. The voltage regulator is just an, uh, another iron core operated set of contact points, but obviously this time they're in the closed position and it's used to regulate maximum and minimum voltage at all times. This circuit's also got a shunt circuit which redirects the electrical flow, going to ground through a resistance placed just ahead electrically of the points. When the points are closed, the field circuit takes the easy route to ground. When the points are open, the field circuit must pass through the resistor to get to ground. The field coil on the generator is connected to one of the voltage regulator contact points. The other point leads directly to ground. When the generator is operating, battery low or a number of devices running, its voltage may stay down below that for which the control is set. Since the flow of current will be too weak to pull the armature down, the generator field will go around through the points. However, if the system is fully charged, the generator voltage will increase until it reaches the maximum limit and current flows through the shunt coil will be high enough to pull the armature down and separate the contact points. Now they repeat this cycle time and time again with the points opening and closing somewhere between 50 and 200 times per second and that maintains a constant voltage in the system. Of course, it's the same with the cutoff really as it is with the voltage regulator. We can adjust the tension on that spring on the contact points so that we can therefore adjust the voltage that it will open at. D in a three coil setup is this, where we have a cutout relay, a voltage regulator and a current re regulator. Because although the voltage is now being controlled, it is still possible to have too much current flowing. And in the current regulator, there's a few turns of thick heavy wire connected in series with the armature. Now again, when the current rises too high and the magnetic field gets too strong, a set of contacts is opened and it disconnects the generator. The advantages of a mechanical setup is that the mechanical system itself both senses and switches. That's what a solenoid does. It senses the voltage and switches at the same time. That on-off switching, which if you want to think of it, is kind of like pulse width modulation, but that on-off switching is the core of current and voltage regulation. Now, in modern day electronics, where we get this beautiful little board, what they do is they separate the sensing and the switching from each other. The sensing is usually done through a resistive network so that we can bring down the voltage to the vo logic voltage level because even though we're pumping out sort of 12 to 14 volts and in some generators far more than that, this stuff can stand somewhere between 3.3 and 5 volts so it's too high. So we use a voltage network to bring it down to a range that the electronics can sense it and then we use a transistor as a switch to switch it. So the first thing you need is a simple voltage divider circuit to scale the possible output voltages into a ranges that the Arduino can cope with. That's between 0 and 5 volts. It's just two resistors in series and in the middle you take the voltage from the Arduino. 
and that goes to pin A0. So that's the sensing circuit, and this is the control circuit. All it is is a switch to turn on and off the field winding. You just use a large transistor mounted to some random bar as a heat sink, and you connect the output to the field winding through the transistor. It's just a solid state electronic on off switch in the same way that the solenoid worked. The Arduino gets connected to pin 13, and pin 13 has its own LED so we can see it flickering off. And here's the um, code to control it. Now, if the output is below the 14 volts, which is the threshold, then the field winding is turned on. As the engine spins up and the alternator goes up beyond the threshold, then you turn it off. Once it goes past the threshold, then the Arduino will turn off and the magnetic field will shrink and the output will dip below the threshold and then the Arduino will turn it back on. So it's basically just switching on and off really fast and that on and off fast switching in link with the engine speed is what the voltage controller does whether it's electromechanical so whatever or generator electrical. you're using whether it's a homemade one like this one or a converted brushless dc motor or a universal motor or an alternator voltage regulation is accomplished the same way you switch the generator in and out depending on the voltage a generator is producing and you can do that either electromechanically where you're combining switching and sensing or you can do it electronically where you separate the switching and sen sensing and use a um, transistor as the electronic switch or you can buy yourself a black box board and make it all very much easier for you. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it helped. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.